Debbie, as a reminder that as we approach the peak of hurricane season, we all need to be prepared. Even weak tropical systems can give us flooding rains, damaging winds, and tornadoes. So it's important to have your plan ready now. At West 2, our whole team is committed to providing trusted coverage wherever you need us. We have team coverage tonight. We have our Sunrise team spanned out across Central Florida. As the season continues, trust West 2 News and the first warning weather team to always keep you ahead of the storm. Tonight's primetime Olympic events on West 2 are sponsored by Orlando Health. Orlando Health proudly supports our athletes in their quest for gold in Paris. Now at 7, new court documents providing detailed insight into the night three Lake County deputies were ambushed. The disturbing statements made by the woman charged with playing a role in their murder. Plus, a big name backing an amendment to legalize recreational marijuana in Florida. Why it could have more Republicans voting yes. And some students are preparing for a new school year and still dealing with learning loss in a post-pandemic world. If those gaps are not closed, it just gets exacerbated over time. What's being done in Central Florida to help students close the gap? Local, must live, late breaking. West 2 News starts now. First at 7, the woman charged in the deadly ambush on Lake County deputies says she is innocent. Julie Sulpizio entered a plea of not guilty on all charges today. Thank you for joining us. For West 2 News at 7, I'm Summer Knowles. I'm Jesse Pagan. New arrest paperwork is giving us more insight into the night of the ambush and shootout. West 2's Dave McDaniel looks at some of the statements made by Julie Sulpizio now charged with playing a role in the murder without holding or firing a gun. Now, the two other deputies shot are recovering. Master Deputy Harold Howell is now home. Meanwhile, Deputy First Class Stefano Gargano just underwent his fifth surgery and remains in the hospital. A memorial service for Master Deputy Bradley Link will be held Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. It will be at Real Life Christian Church in Claremont. The public is welcome to attend. Governor DeSantis has also ordered flags fly at half staff on Saturday. In Orange County, deputies arrested the 16-year-old girlfriend of a teen shot and killed last month. This was the scene on July 30th on Easton Street after 16-year-old David Vargas was killed. Investigators say he, his girlfriend, who we are not naming because of her age, and a friend were playing with a gun Vargas brought to the home. That's when the girlfriend pointed the gun at Vargas and pulled the trigger, according to detectives. She's now charged with manslaughter. In Volusia County, a 17-year-old is dead after being found shot inside a car. This happened late last night along Main Street in Pearson near Emporia Road. Investigators say the teenager was found in the driver's seat and had been shot multiple times. Two other people in that car, including an 18-year-old who was shot in the leg. He then knocked on a neighbor's door and they called 911. What do you think? It's impossible. Okay. Someone got shot. How? Yeah. Someone got it's shot. Yeah, it's impossible. Someone got shot. We need it right now. The deputies say the third person in the car was not injured. They have not released any other details about what happened. We will let you know as soon as we know more. All right, I want to bring in first warning chief meteorologist Tony Manoffi because it has been a hot day even though some showers cooled it off. Yeah, hopefully those uh, cooling effects will keep on, Tony. Yeah, well, we are still tracking some evening showers and storms that continue to cool uh, just a few of us off thus far this evening. Still right around 90, 92 inland areas, but back towards the coast, we've had more uh, showers and storms. Look at the triple digit feels like temperatures though. I-4 uh, north and west still feels like 100 to 106 degrees out there right now. Showers and storms cooling uh, many of us down. Had a nice little uh, piece of energy come through southern Flagler County. Now we're watching this little impulse back towards Altoona. A few showers and storms along the I-4 corridor, and we're about to get a collision there in the metro areas. First piece of energy right over Deltona with some good rain. Behind that, there's another developing crop of showers and a few lightning strikes approaching Sorrento, so we'll continue to monitor that. This piece of energy along 27 is headed towards the 429. While that's going on, outflow boundaries will collide with this later on. Could be an uptick in the showers and storms there over southwest Orange County a little bit later on and a few showers and storms near Wedgefield and a few just to the north and west of Melbourne. Uh, coming up in the next couple minutes, we're going to take a look at the tropics. They're heating up as well. In Commitment 2024, a top Republican leader is now giving his endorsement to Amendment 3. That would legalize recreational marijuana here in Florida. As West 2's Greg Fox explains, the proposed amendment is drawing battle lines in the GOP as voters decide. 
Smart and Safe Florida just announced today that Democratic State Senator Chevron Jones is also endorsing Amendment 3. Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump have agreed to a debate. The two sides will meet on September 10th for the ABC-sponsored debate. No other details have been released. We'll be sure to update you as soon as we learn more on air and online at WESH.com. New at 7, a man is recovering in the hospital after he was rescued from a burning home. How do I get through? Sir! This happened in St. Petersburg Monday night. Police say they got a 911 call that hang, hung up around 9.30. Officers responded and found smoke and heard a man crying out for help. He was trapped inside a bedroom as the home was engulfed in flames. Officers were able to remove the bedroom's window and pull the victim out. So to come, as students prepare for the new school year, they may be facing some hurdles. Yeah, one of those, learning loss in a post-pandemic world. It's really nobody's fault. It's, it's not the school's fault. It's just, it's the circumstance of the, of the situation. And, you know, we just need to look forward and how can we move forward from here. The challenges for students years after the COVID-19 outbreak and how we can conquer them. Closed captioning brought to you by National Floors Direct. Central Florida traffic can be brutal, but Megan Mackey is here to help you navigate it all. Consider me your local transportation expert. This is what first warning traffic looks like with Megan Mackey, and it's here on West 2 News. Time and Tim brought to you by Boniface Hires, one to you forever. Thank you. The impacts COVID lockdowns had on students' learning is coming into clearer focus. Research and testing data show students aren't scoring as high on standardized testing as they were before the pandemic. Well, she, Sheldon Dutaz explains why some students who weren't even in school during the 2020 lockdown are still playing catch up. The state of Florida has scholarships through Step Up for Students to help eligible parents pay for tutoring services. Parents and students at Orange County's Howard and Luminary Middle Schools say they are frustrated tonight, and that's because there's a good possibility they won't be ready for the start of classes Monday. Workers are scrambling to finish the renovation of Howard and the new Luminary School. The superintendent says she's been assured by contractors that they'll have the necessary certificates to open Monday. All of the work may not be done, but they're making contingencies for adjusting space to accommodate classes. Her one promise is no school will open unless every space is safe. Parents and students we spoke with say the district should have planned better and inform them sooner that there could be a delay. I'm very, you know, concerned and upset because I have uh, three kids in three different schools and working full time. So it's kind of juggle. I can't some days work from home, but it's going to be hard, very hard. I don't feel like we're getting the time we need to um, get to know our teachers and um, get to know each other as well. The superintendent says families will receive updates throughout the weekend. Go back to school with West 2 News Sunrise team. We will have live team coverage across Central Florida as your kids start this brand new school year. Join us Monday starting 430 in the morning. Alaska's capital is seeing destructive flooding from a glacier experiencing a meltdown. A rush of water Tuesday swelled a river to record levels. More than 100 homes have been damaged. Glacial lake outbursts happen when a lake of melting snow, ice and rain drains quickly after pooling and topping the glacier that had been holding it back. The governor issued a disaster declaration there. The outbursts are becoming more common as climate change causes glaciers to thin or melt altogether. And here at home, we've been dealing with some heat mm. and uh, fortunately it's cooled down at least in some areas this evening. Tom. Yeah, the storms do help out this time you get the breezes going, but uh, most of the folks in our western communities are still pretty hot right yeah. now. Yeah. So uh, let's take you back outside. I want to break this down there for you. Eastern side of the peninsula, they've had some uh, cooling showers and storms and those clouds are uh, keeping the temperatures in check outside right now, uh, whereas off to the west. Look at uh, Marion County, the villages back towards Claremont, 90, 92 degrees. Eastern side of the peninsula, 80 to 82 degrees so a good 10 degree drop off in the actual temperature but look at the feels like values here middle and upper 80s along many coastal communities low and middle 105 107 range here as we get you back towards wildwood the villages and up towards ocala so plenty of heat even this late in the evening and if you work outside for uh, a living or if you're doing some landscaping of your own just make sure to take some breaks drink some water and you'll be in good shape let's take you up towards palm coast couple showers here have moved off the coast we work our way farther to the south here and you can see a developing line 
of showers and storms near Sorrento. Big outflow boundary is working west, may collide with the storms on the south side of Lake Apopka. So we'll be monitoring that as it could push into the attractions. And then you can see from Sorrento to Paisley, a line of showers and thunderstorms will once again redirect its motion back towards the DeBerry and Deltona a little bit later on. There's your breeze working right over uh, the 417 back towards Dean Road. And then on the western side along the 429, uh, an advancing line of some showers and storms may collide with this breeze, so we could see an uptick in the activity southwest Orange County a little bit later on. Over towards Christmas, right along 50, a little area of showers and storms trying to work back towards the coast, as are a few sprinkles here coming out of rural Osceola County. Do, though, appear to be weakening. So lingering showers through 7 to 8 o'clock, and then once we get past the 9 o'clock hour, it's mostly cloudy. It's warm. It's humid. Overnight low temperatures only dropping back into the middle and the upper 70s area wide to forecast for tonight, plenty humid, just like today. We'll get the showers and storms going. A quick west to east flow means a lot of the storms will be on the eastern side of the peninsula by late afternoon. So if you're making it a beach day tomorrow, just keep an eye to the sky by mid-afternoon. Beach temperatures 92, 94. Inland temperatures 93 to 96. Feels like temperatures area-wide through the upcoming weekend 103 to 107. So the pools and the beaches will be the place to go. Just remember to apply your sunblock, and if you head to the beach, swim near those lifeguards. On into the weekend, there's our front. Scattered afternoon showers and thunderstorms increasing as we pull up some moisture off of the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. Let's take a look now at Debbie moving up and racing to the north-northeast. As that pulls away, we're keeping an eye on this wave right here. Now has a 40% chance of developing by the time we head into late weekend and early next week. It is dealing with a little bit of dry air for now, but that is going to change. So 40 percent chance on that. Two other active waves will continue to monitor there for late next week. European shows that wave right here. Trying to get better organized headed towards the Caribbean. We're hoping that a series of fronts, though, will keep all of this energy out to sea. Keep checking back in. Way too early to definitively make that call as of right now. But as we head into the weekend, shower and storm coverage are going up. The Olympic Zone. Live from Universal Orlando Resort. Join us each night during the Paris Olympics for in-depth coverage of the games, the highlights, medal counts, and a behind-the-scenes look at what's happening from Paris. Plus, follow our own local athletes on their quest to win gold. We are thrilled to be hosting the Olympic Zone. Live from Universal Orlando Resort. Are you ready for the games? We are. Tonight at 7.30. Brought to you on West 2 by Advent Health. This first morning weather update is sponsored by attorney Dan Newlin. As the Paris Olympics continue, our own winter athletes are watching and getting ready for their shot. Now, Olympic skier David Weiss sat down with our Stuart Moore at the Olympic Zone. All right, and that does it for Western News at 7. Ozone is next. See you later. Central Florida is home. We rise for the challenges each new day brings and spend time each evening focused on what matters most to us. At WESH 2, we understand what's important. That's why we focus on you, so that you can understand and be understood. It's in these moments, these shared experiences, that we connect, a bond that brings us all closer. This is WESH 2 News.